This is the only Virginia that I have left, but uh, I cling to it, you know? We're serious. Get their attention to tell the story. Uh, about, about a little over 200 years ago, two brothers in France who were wallpaper makers were sitting in front of their fireplace feeding scraps of paper into the fireplace. And he more were with Gauthier. I haven't got a clue as to what the first names were. But he read one of the things that they noticed was every once in a while a piece of the paper would float up the chimney. And so they got this bright idea that maybe the smoke was lighter than air and it was making the uh, make the uh, piece of paper float. If they could build a paper bag and put smoke into it, that it would fly. And so they tried this out. And sure enough, it was true. And for, for quite some time, they thought it was the smoke that was causing it. So they kept building bags that were bigger and bigger and bigger, and finally somebody said, well, gee whales, I wonder what would happen if we put some animals in the basket underneath it and let them fly off. And they put in a, uh, a sheep, a chicken, and a rabbit in a basket, and they sent it off, and they, after it went up in the air several hundred feet and came back down, uh, all the animals were fine. Because they really didn't know what was the problem at that point in time. Didn't know perhaps the air wouldn't run out. They had no concept of altitude and how that worked. I do understand that the chicken broke a leg because the sheep got excited, but otherwise <laughs> they, they did fine. Well, it was the sheep that broke the legs, the chicken. The sheep broke the leg because the chicken got excited. I don't think so. <laughs> so, the next experiment was to go ahead and see whether or not a, a human could live. And the king of France wanted to be just a prisoner because he figured if a prisoner died, who cared? A little different attitude than we have today. But they decided that this was too great an honor for a prisoner. So a man by the name of Roger got to take the first balloon ride. And in those days, the balloons were as big or bigger than the ones we fly today. But basically, it had a platform that went all the way around and a big basket and when underneath it was made out of iron. And in this basket they would put all kinds of things like wet wool and wet straw, anything with big smoke. And balloon became quite popular among the rich and you can imagine what it must have looked like when across the countryside because here was all this smoke coming out and embers falling down through the bottom of the basket and of course when, the ba when they would land a lot of times the superstitious farmers would come out to kill this great flaming dragon from the sky. And they would tear the balloons up. Well, at that point in time, champagne was strictly the, the drink of kings. They were the only ones that could afford it. So the rich people used to take a couple of bottles of champagne and stick them in the basket. When they would land, they'd pop the cork on the champagne real quick, haul out the glasses, and the farmers came across the field. They'd go like this, you know. French farmers aren't stupid. <laughs> they put down the pitchforks and took the champagne. <laughs> and so we ended up with a tradition of champagne that has gone along with ballooning from almost the beginning day. Someplace along the line, we picked up a poem. No one knows the origin of the poem. A few skullduggery type Irishman claim that it's an Irish prayer. But being a good Scotsman, I can tell you that, that uh, Irishmen plagiarize and they steal. <laughs> so I like to think of it as being, <laughs> so I like to think of it as being a, a poem that belongs to all of us and we really don't know where it came from. Now we're gonna say this poem over over you, and this is as I say a solemn religious occasion. Then I want you to reach down and pick up the glass. You cannot use your hands. You can brace your hands on the ground if you want to, and you must drain the, the glass entirely without spilling the drop. Because tradition says if you don't drain it completely, if you spill any drops, that it means bad luck for the pilot on the next flight. And the only way, I tell you, the only way to mitigate this is for you to fly nude with me. The poem goes like this The winds have welcomed you with softness, and the sun has blessed you with its warm heat. You have flown so high and so well that God joins you in laughter. And this said you gently back into the loving arms of Mother Earth. Okay, Kurt. Get in your tea, Beth. Don't drop it, Kurt. Keep going. You're doing great. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I don't know if that counts, Karen. <laughs> All I can tell you is something strong. 
fun with you this weekend. I know he just kept drinking. Chatfield? Dripping down. Oh, my God.